Good morning, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington Teach Hutch practitioners for animals and people. This is Tristan, he's a corgi, and we are bundled up because it was 40 degrees yesterday and it went down to like five degrees last night. And all night we've had like 40, 50 mile an hour winds howling all night long. I mean, I got like no sleep. I had to have the radio on really loud because it was scaring Tristan and frankly me <laughs> because I live in the woods, but I cut down all the trees that could fall on my house. But uh, luckily we haven't lost power as many people have. And uh, although I did hear um, like some work trucks out there around five in the morning. Anyway, brisk day. I think the high today is 20 with a wind chill of like zero. So uh, but tomorrow, back to the warmer weather. Yeah, Danny, it's it's warmer where you are than where I am. They actually said on the radio, it's warmer in the Dakotas. <laughs> Anyhow, today I want to talk about something that keeps coming up. Um, so many people have puppies now, and I see a lot of baby corgi puppies, of course, on the corgi Facebook pages and um, on some of my sister's uh, followers and some other holistic dog pages. and. Um, just people I see in general, including my friends who have the cute little baby wiener. We have to do a Facebook Live with baby wiener one day because he's adorable before he gets huge. He's already twice as big as when they got him, little Otis. Anyway, and this is the idea of how to house train a dog. Now, that's in terms of the bathroom. Um, a lot of people are saying, he's going on the pee pads, now what do I do? And that's a bit of a problem because if you have them going on pee pads or newspapers or anywhere in your house, you're basically teaching your dog to pee in the house. And I, of course, work with tons of people who have herding dogs. We love the herding dogs. They're really smart. They go outside a couple of times in a little patch of grass in the side yard and that's where they're gonna go. And dogs use all of their senses. You know, they're much more sensual beings than we are, sensory, I should say. And, you know, they're gonna remember the way that area smells and the way it looks and what the sounds are. And if you have your dog on a pee pad in the house and people think that you can gradually drag the pee pad closer and closer to the door and that eventually you'll put it outside and he'll go outside. Um, this is not usually the way dogs think. <laughs> that one spot where the pee pad initially was, maybe a spot that they will use for a very long time. And you have to, even if you have a pee pad, you have to really clean everything in that area um, or they will always smell that that's where they peed. And I found it so interesting, the one time Tristan did not pee outside in his whole life, where did he go in my house? He went to the restroom and he jumped in the bathtub and he peed in there. Um, and who knows why he picked the bathtub. I mean, that was a horrible bathroom. It had carpet in it and everything. And um, probably the whole bathroom smelled terrible to a, uh, or delicious to a dog. But you know, it's interesting that the place that I go to use the bathroom is where he chose to go. Dogs are smart. You know, we used to have this idea that, oh, don't let him chew on an old slipper because then he'll chew on your new slipper. Dogs are smart enough to know the difference between old and new slipper. And let's face it, the bigger issue is what's in that slipper that your dog could choke on or swallow that you don't want him to have. Um, they make much better things for dogs to chew on these days. And the same is true for house training. You know, just take your dog outside and ask him to go, you know, give him your cue, which for us is hurry up. <laughs> and because you're always in a hurry and it, I don't like standing out there saying, do your business or, you know, time to tinkle or whatever other people say. Um, so we use that word. And I just say that word until they go. And the minute they go, I give them a treat and reward them heavily. And I do that to the other dog, because I always have two dogs at this point. I do that with the other dog as well, so that they know that peeing equals food, pooping outdoors equals food. That's what we're supposed to do. And if you don't have another dog, I mean, you get a friend over or something to have their dog pee around the yard a little bit so it smells like a place your dog would like to go. And it's pretty easy to get them outside. Now, my friends with the baby wiener, um, because they know me and my sister and they've had lots of dogs, they've never had him tinkle in the house. He has always gone outside. Um, and what this means is, you know, when they're really little, you're going out every hour or two all night. Your dog needs to go out after he pees, I mean, after he pees, after he eats, after he drinks, after he plays, and after he sleeps. 
And the rule of thumb is that, you know, they can hold it for one hour based per month of their life. So if you get a dog at eight weeks, um, for every four weeks, he can hold it an hour. So that's, you know, two hours he can go without having to go. So baby Wiener, who was gotten when he was eight weeks old, he was going out every two hours all night long. They had to get up and take him out and take turns taking him out. So, you know, this is one reason not to get a puppy in January in New England. Um, but, you know, depending on where you live, that might not be such a problem. And the good thing is when you have a dog in the winter is that you can see the yellow snow and make sure that they've gone because with a wiener in particular or baby corgi, they're so low to the ground. If they're squatting, you might not be able to tell if they've gone or not. So snow has its advantages. But, you know, by the time his dog is 12 weeks old, he can hold it for three hours. And at the end of a year, he can pretty much hold it, you know, half a day while you're at work. So um, that's kind of a rule of thumb, but don't ignore those other signals that they do need to go out after they drink, eat, play, sleep. Um, really important. And, you know, remember, use your own brain. If you are training your dog to go on a pee pad, you're training him to go in the house. Now, if you live in New York City and you've got a little shih tzu and you want him to go in the house because you're out of the house for 12 hours a day and you don't think that's fair to him, fine. But you might want to set it up a little differently than just having a pee pad. You might want to put something like a plastic tray under the pee pad. You might want to put it in an area where if they miss the tray, it won't matter to you. Um, you know, teaching a dog to go indoors is really not great, you know, because your house is like their den. And most dogs do have a sense of a clean den and don't want to make a mess in the house. Now, my dog Comet... <clears throat> He came from a very bad situation. He had been in a crate too small for him. He couldn't turn around in it. He was up to his elbows in poop and pee, and he was sleeping in it. He, he did not know anything different. <clears throat> so when I got Comet, it was a long process to teach him to go outside, and I couldn't put him in a crate ever in his life. I had to get a puppy playpen, and that was better because he could move around. Um, and I did not put pee pads or paper in there. I, you know, I, when I thought he might go, I took him out and it didn't take him. I mean, he, because of his situation, he was kind of what I would call a bit slow for a corgi, but really within like two weeks, he was very reliably going outside and he never went in the house again. So, you know, so important when you are thinking about how to teach your dog something, what is it you want them to do? Pee outside. So why would you put a pee pad in the house to teach them to pee in the house? Dogs are smart. They are paying attention to tiny cues from us all the time and in ways that you don't even know. Like they may associate where that pad was with a particular way that um, room smells or the way it sounds and that's what they're gonna look for when they need to go. So, you know, and then that dog might not be reliable when he goes to visit grandma for the weekend or when he goes to your friend's house when you're away. So you really want your dog to be reliable. So, you know, I think part of why people are using pee pads is because lots of places are selling pee pads now. Like my sister, <coughs> Danny says they teach their dogs to go outside. Yeah, it's nice to have extra dogs to do that with. So <coughs> why would someone like my sister be selling pee pads? Lots of places are selling really cute pee pads now is not to train your puppy. Those pee pads are great for people who have dogs with, you know, any kind of neurologic disease like DM where they can't control their bladder. It's great for an older dog, um, an animal that has a bladder infection and can't control their bladder and feels like they need to go all the time. I mean, there's lots of illnesses your pet could have where having a pee pad can be really helpful. Um, they sometimes people use them in the crates um, because they they don't their dog doesn't chew it up. A lot of times they like to get the stuffing out of the beds. So pee pads have their use, and I think part of the confusion comes in when you're a new pet owner. Either you haven't had a dog in your life and you're 40, or you had a dog when you were 10 and now you're 40 and you're getting your first dog. And you hear this stuff about pee pads, and you remember people talking about paper training, but now they have pads. And uh, certainly the pads that I used for Comet when he had DM, those were great to chew up. They were fluffy and lightweight and, uh, you know, any dog would chew those. Now they come in fabric. But, you know, you, you hear about that and you think, oh, pee pads, great invention. You know, my dog will be able to pee on them instead of newspapers. Because who even has newspapers anymore? But 
you know, you just have to go that extra step. When you get a dog and you're new to having a dog, make sure you ask everybody everything they know about dogs. And all this information is going to come in and just sort of bounce around in your brain and you're starting to understand things. And I think a lot of these people are novice pet owners. You know, they just, they've never had to house train a dog before and they don't know how to do it. And they know the pee pads are out there. You know, when you go to the pet store, somebody might even say, do you want some of these for your puppy? And they're like, huh, maybe, I don't know. I guess I might need them. And they purchase them. So think about it. Where do you want your dog to go? Outside, you know, and... <laughs> The same is like where you're feeding them. You know, dogs even, for instance, um, Baby Wiener is a good example of this actually. Uh, he travels quite a bit for a little guy because his people are in several locations. And if you teach your dog to always sit by the treat jar to get a treat and you don't train them to sit in other areas, they may associate that sitting for the treat at the treat jar as the only time they have to sit so you gotta make sure you teach them whatever you're teaching them in lots of different areas. You know, you want them to sit outside, you want them to sit in the living room, you wanna walk around the house with treats and make them sit in different places so that they really learn what sit means. Sit is not just wait by the jar for you to feed them. So make sure you give them all different experiences and you know, certainly with that little guy who's learning to pee outside, anytime he pees outside, reward 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 you you're gonna have dog snacks in your pockets and um you know and they have done lots of research that uh praise actually is a better reward for dogs and humans than food but of course we want to be absolutely clear when we're training a puppy so food and praise works great so if you see pee pads think about them for an older sick dog a dog that has issues not for your puppy Right, Tristan? He says, I've never seen a pee pad for me. I don't know what they are for. <laughs> we are going to bundle up later today and try to take a walk. I mean, it has been just unbelievably windy. Usually we have gusts of 50, you know, and but this was sustained 40 and 50 mile an hour winds all night. I feel sorry for people that live in hurricane areas or tornado prone areas because um, it's pretty frightening. I mean, I could hear things like branches blowing across the roof of my house, even though I'm not near any trees. Ugh, it's alarming. So everybody have a great day. Spring is on the way. And teach your dog to do what you want him to do in different places so that he will learn what that is that you're telling him. Right, Tristan? Thanks for joining us. Everybody have a great day.